Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life Experience. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to welcome you to today's special episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion. The Good Life Devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word aimed at bringing Christians into maturity as sons of God to be able to display our Christ-like perfection in this world and also to bring in the greatest soul harvest into the kingdom of our dear Jesus just before his soon return. The glory devotion by the grace of God is on many television and radio platforms and internet platforms at various times of the day. And the reason is so that everyone can choose the best platform and the best time so that to enable you to be consistent Okay, because the Glory Devotion is a series of teaching every week. We take a subject and have a series of teaching under that same subject. So it's not something you can just watch on Monday and miss Wednesday or Thursday. You must watch the whole thing to have the whole message. Sometimes we know that some media houses in transmission may have a challenge or the other. If you watch in the morning and maybe that media house did not stream, it is not because we didn't stream, make sure you catch us on the afternoon platform. If you miss it, catch it us on the uh, night platform. So don't miss it on your platform and say, so, no, the Google Adivation did not come. Sometimes there are technical challenges with these things, but we are always streaming. This is why you need to download the FGM uh, TV app. That one, no matter the time of the day and no matter the technical challenges with any media house, you will still have the message. Oh, hallelujah. Wow, this is going to be an amazing week. And I want to inspire you, if you have watched and you are blessed, or the Lord has inspired you to be part of making this thing reach many more people. Don't hesitate. There are three simple ways you can be part to make this thing happen. Start just praying as the Lord leads you to pray to regular devotion. That's the greatest partnership we desire from you. Number two, recommend it to other people because in these days and in this age, these truths are needed. And number three, call, call us and pay to get it to other media platforms. We're going to be looking at the subject of the power of the cross this week. So we're going to have a series of teachings under this topic. You cannot miss it. This is the same as talking about the power of the blood of Jesus shed or the power of the death of Jesus. It's so powerful you can't miss it. Okay? And I have good news for you because this subject is so detailed that we will not be able to exhaust it in just some 30 minutes teachings or less. So I'm going to scratch the surfaces from Monday to Friday, but we are going to have a special online Easter convention from Friday to, through Saturday and Sunday, 7 p.m. GMT, streaming live on the Vibinda Live page on Facebook, and you can also catch us on FGM TV. So ensure you have the two at hand or handy so that if network misbehaves on one, you can easily switch on the other so that you don't miss anything. Okay, so from Friday to Sunday, we are going to have an online Easter convention and we are going to look at the subject, the power of the cross in details. I'm excited for you and you have to be excited and get yourself ready. But suffice it to say, for now, we'll try to scratch the surfaces and the sums up headings, which we'll look at in detail in the convention. So let's start off today with the topic, God cannot tolerate sin. So the part one of the power of the cross is God cannot tolerate sin. We can share the word of prayer. Eternal and everlasting Father, we are so excited to discover that we are begotten of you in Christ Jesus by the Holy Ghost and sent forth to the earth to be the means of communication of your benevolence, your love, your glory to the earth. Thank you for empowering us to bring this light to the world. Thank you for this family of fellowship at this time of the day. I call the release of life and spirit, a transformation of life forever, even as we fellowship in your word at this moment. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. 
God cannot erase sin. I'll try to look quickly at certain sentences or maybe list some points, okay, so that we can eat a few things. But the subject is technical and a little deep and would we'll eat more in the Easter convention from 15 to 17. The first point here is that don't get stuck at the cross and don't become unrestrained after the resurrection. Very important point. Don't get stuck at the cross and don't become unrestrained after the resurrection. The Bible teaches clearly that if you want to live a life that pleases God, don't be like a horse that is moving ahead of God, neither should you be like a mule that is refusing to move. There are people that have chosen to stay at the cross, the cross, the death of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and have not made any effort to look at the glorious life that the cross ushered them into. The ultimate reason for Jesus' coming was not to die on the cross. His ultimate reason for coming was to open the door for the adoption of human beings into sonship. Because the adoption of mankind is what was predestined before the whole world began in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. But when it was time for this adoption to be carried out by God, man was in a wrong state by sin or in sin. So God had to sort out the issue of sin through the death of Jesus. So the death of Jesus is not an end in itself. It's a means to the end. And the end is getting human beings to be adopted as sons of God into his kingdom. Okay, so if you build your tabernacle at the cross, the cross, the cross, and you don't make effort to look beyond the resurrection, you will stay there and live in a life that is not Christian. Because the fact actually is that Christianity began at the resurrection. The Jesus you confess today to be born again is not Jesus of Nazareth that walked on the earth. It is the Jesus that rose again from the dead. That's why I said that if you will declare Jesus as Lord, believing that God raised him from the dead, that is where being born again starts. Okay? So, don't remain stuck to the cross. It does not also mean that neglect the cross in what you need to know in your work in Christ. Don't also take off after the resurrection and behave as though the cross does not exist. Then you have become a horse. There are also those who like to jump into, oh, now we are in the dispensation of grace and, you know, the Old Testament God is past. The God that judges sin is past. The wicked God is past. Now we are in a new God. There are actually calls and sects today that say, we believe only in the New Testament because the Old Testament God, we don't know who he is. He's too wicked, too some way, you know. But because they are confused. Wonderful people. God is God. He doesn't change. Dispensations change. And in the dispensations, the mode of his dealings differ. But God's nature and his principles do not change whether it is Old Testament or New Testament. If you will be a Christian that will live the fullness of the Christian life, don't remain stuck at the cross. Neither should you take off after the resurrection and forget the cross. Why? The foundation of your work in the post-resurrection era is built on the cross. If you don't understand the power of the cross, you will live carelessly by your understanding of the resurrection. This is why the Lord has sent us this year to take you back to the cross so that by looking at the cross, you can milk out some powerful divine revelations that will make your Christianity in the post-resurrection era an excellence. So number one, don't remain stuck at the cross. Don't take off and become unrestrained after the resurrection. Number two is that don't be confused about the Old Testament and the New Testament God. There is only one God. There is nothing like the Old Testament God and the New Testament God. It's the same person. But someone is asking, I read my Bible and I see that Moses was the meekest man on the earth. He just did one mistake. And that one mistake, he didn't enter into the promised land. I see the sons of Aaron, Abiu and Adab. These were new priests. They offered strength fire. They died immediately. A lot of people try to give a lot of interpretations to these things. Then you say, ah, but I see today, people are just committing sin. And they are still sitting in church. Or they are even being used by God to do great things. So what is happening? Today, people, you do something and you don't die. You can just ask for forgiveness. Couldn't God have forgiven Moses? 
No, you don't think that the Old Testament God is the same as the New Testament God. No, it is not like that. It is the same God. This is where the power of grace is. The reason why it looks like God is not punishing people for their sin is not because he's not punishing them. We'll take a look at that in our next episode. Grace is a shock absorber. It does not mean there's no pothole. And that is why God would like to caution those who have taken off unrestrained in the dimensions of grace, thinking that God does nothing about wrongdoing. It's a lie. So don't get confused about the Old Testament God and the New Testament God. Are they the same? Especially when it comes to the way he deals with sin. He is the same person. He hasn't changed. If you get this, it will help your walk in Christ. So don't get confused about at all. It's the same God. Malachi 3 says, I am the Lord God. I change it not. He's immutable. He's light in him. There is no darkness at all. Number three is that you need to be aware that the modern generation of Christians is becoming less powerful because of the deception to think that God doesn't do anything about sin because of grace. You are more likely to find Christians that shout about God is good, God is love, etc. But they are not able to display a single power of God. You are more likely to find Christians who are permissive, they can just watch anything and get involved in anything and just feel cool. And yet, when Satan shows up, they have nothing to show. They become more, more, more worldly, more mathematical, philosophical, scientific. A form of godliness without power. And the secret is that the reason why Satan likes them to love such a way of living is because it makes them powerless. And it is because it deceives them to continue to live in wrongdoing, thinking that grace is enough for wrongdoing. That is not so. However, the fact that they don't die, the fact that they can have forgiveness and all that, is the proof of the power of the dispensation of grace. How can you separate these things? That's why you shouldn't miss the Easter convention. We are going to stick all these things from one angle to the other, and even in these teachings. So, uh, don't, don't be deceived into powerlessness and a form of godliness without uh, power by accepting this lifestyle of generality and worldliness in the name of God is good, God is kind, it is grace, and everything goes. No. Our topic is God cannot tolerate sin. The point here is that the reason why I told you there's no difference between the Old Testament God and the New Testament God is for you to know that God is still the same. If he could not tolerate sin in the Old Testament, it is still the same today. What you should find out is so if God does not tolerate sin today, how does he handle the wrongdoings of even people who are in Christ? When they commit acts of sin, how does God handle it so that we don't see the instant judgments? Are you following this? So, um, don't get carried away and deceive. It's a serious strategy of Satan to let people just take off in the name of grace, 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 and then become normal. Well, you, you can mark my works. Watch people who like to be very permissive about uh, issues of sin because they think that grace works and see what they can do. See the power they display in, in their lives. They have no power over sin. Most of the times, many of some people have something hidden and they want to just cover it up with the understanding of grace. This is why we must understand the power of the cross. Number three is that the fact that uh, God still judges sin today or the fact that God still cannot tolerate sin today is not because David Binda is saying it. It is scriptural. During the Easter convention, I'll take you deeper as we read some of those scriptures. But I can just tease your mind a little bit. The church that started in Jerusalem, mind you, was not a church under the Old Testament. The church that Peter led in Jerusalem, the early days of the church, it was a church fully under grace. These were churches that even Paul went to at times after his conversion or his being born again. In that church, a man and a woman 
who had an, a wrong understanding of grace thought that, oh, it's a new dispensation of grace. God will not do anything about sin. They are called Ananias and Sapphira. What did God do there? By the authority of the Spirit, they died. This was in the New Testament. This was under grace after Jesus died and resurrected and after the Holy Ghost came. If this was the only instance in the Bible, it should be enough education for anyone who wants to take off in a kind of super grace dimension to realize that, hey, let me be cautious. God still cannot tolerate it. It wasn't Satan that killed Ananias and Sapphira. It was Peter being full of the Holy Ghost, instructing them by the power of God. Maybe you want another example. I mean, I'm excited, and excited here, you need to understand what that means. About the book of Revelation, again, in the New Testament, you look at from chapter 2 all the way to the end of chapter 3, and God comes and is addressing these churches. If you go to chapter 2, I'll read it more, uh, but you can, you can study it on your own from verse 1 to 5. Somewhere along the verses, the Lord says something very important. He says, verse 4, that nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. I was amazed to read this about a church in the New Testament. I thought if you were in grace, God never has a problem with you. Whatever you do doesn't matter. Oh, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And everything is just cool. You can just do anything. God says in the New Testament, I have something against you. This is second place. In a matter of two or three witnesses, something should be established. And he actually warned them. He says that remember where you've fallen from and go back. If not, I'll take an action. Again, God cannot tolerate something that is inconsistent with his nature in the New Testament under grace. But how can people do that today? You need to get the understanding. If you catch, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be saying this in details in the uh, convention, but in Revelation 21, even in the grace period and uh, it's, it's ending, God is going to cast warmongers, liars, and all this into the lake of fire. If grace changed God, there would have been no condemnation for those who don't believe in Jesus. Because they refuse to believe in his son, they are condemned. And that is in grace. And all these things I've shown you, they are not under the Old Testament. They show that God is the same God. He cannot tolerate sin. It is his nature. And grace has not changed that aspect of God. The dealings are different, but you need to have an understanding. If not, you are most likely, especially in this modern generation, to take off. Because it sounds sweet. Oh, God is love. God is this. God is sweet. Oh, and it's a trap of the enemy to keep you living a life that is not consistent with God so that you can be powerless. And that's why today the world is, doesn't think much of the church when it comes to power. Why? Many, because of the wrong understanding of grace, are not living lives in line with the scriptures. And there's no way the power of God can flow through you or be exhibited by you when you are living a life that is inconsistent with God. Gifts can operate somehow, but it won't last. Oh, praise God. I'm going to go on a short break when I come. I'll let us take a look at. So, where is the power of the cross in this area? And then we'll round off. I'll be right back after this break. Praise the Lord, beloved in Christ. The final move of the Spirit before the rapture is here. The days of religious living are over. Reality is here. Celebrate Easter with meaning as you join Dr. David Binder on the special online Easter Convention 2022. That the power of the cross starting 15 to 17 of April 2022. Streaming live on David Bindan Live Facebook and FGM TV. Don't miss the special online Easter convention with Dr. David Bindan. Your life shall surely be transformed. Life is good. Enjoy.
Praise the Lord. So, why are we talking about this under the power of the cross? I said that it is very important, especially for the new generation, to sometimes visit the cross again, to be able to milk some powerful revelations that will become foundations for your work in the post-resurrection era. Because resurrection is not without death. There will have been no resurrection without the cross. So the cross is the foundation upon which resurrection is built. Though you don't live in the cross, your work in the resurrection is undergirded by the cross. And this is it. If you look at the cross, why will Jesus die on the cross in the first place? In Jeremiah 31 verse 3, the Bible makes it clear that God has loved us with an everlasting love. In fact, Ephesians 1, 4 and 5 declares an amazing love that God has for mankind. Not even Christians, mankind. He, he loved mankind and predestined mankind unto adoption before the world began. Now, he started this project with the first man, Adam and his wife. And Adam and his wife messed up. They acted unrighteously. And yet God loved them so much that he predestined them unto adoption. And that was done by God. That could not be reversed. What should God do? God should have said, oh, wow. You know what? I've already predestined you unto adoption because I love you. So even though my nature is just and I must judge every sin, I'm not able to acquit the sinner and I'm not able to condemn the just. But because of this thing I've done, as for you, I'm God. I can just do anything. So you are with your sin. No, he didn't do that. It is against his nature. He loved mankind, but mankind needed to reap the fruit of his actions. Are you following this? Now, but now he had locked mankind's future in a predestination plan. So what will happen? God needed to judge mankind and yet save mankind. So what could he do? The only way was to judge himself for mankind. So that he will remain just and the justifier of him that is justified by, by God. Are you following this? And this is why he came in the form of a man. This is the power of the cross. And why did God do this? Sometimes when God works, people don't see that God is in eternity. You know, he's bigger than eternity. So when God does something on the earth, he, he does this as a language to all of existence. So by the death of Jesus, God boldly and clearly announced to all of existence that I, God, I cannot tolerate sin. Even if I love you so much, I cannot tolerate sin. If I could, I would not have come as my son to die on the cross. What does that tell you? Anytime a son of God, you read your Bible and you see that Jesus died on the cross, let it remind you that you can't live anyhow. The cross is the loudest voice of God in the whole universe that God cannot tolerate sin. Our main scripture today, which uh, I'm now reading, is in Habakkuk 3, uh, 13. It says that your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treasures? And why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves. No, Habakkuk was so bothered about what was going on in his days, and he felt that God was giving too much permission to the wicked. You know, you need to understand how God deals with the wicked. He, he loves the sinner, he, though he doesn't love sin. And he gives the wicked so much opportunity so that by the time his judgment comes, the universe and nobody can accuse God of any error. So if you're a child of God and you've been misbehaving and nothing has happened, don't think that it's going to be like that forever. As you are hearing me now, take a hold of the grace I will be teaching you and begin to walk in your righteousness and not wait until God does something about that situation. Paul, the apostle by the Spirit said that if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Praise the Lord. So the power of the cross that the church, especially in this modern days, needs to understand is that the cross is a message that God cannot Tolerate sin, no matter how much he loves you. So, we are in the dispensation of grace. Still, that nature of God hasn't changed. He doesn't tolerate. He cannot behold sin. Then you may ask, why don't you die with all the mistakes you've done that God has forgiven you? Yes, it is because there's something called a shock absorber, grace. If you have this understanding, it is different from the one who thinks that because nothing is happening to him, then God is not really doing anything about sin. 
No, something is being done. But just that the, the shock is absorbed before it comes to you. And that is why, praise God, if you enter into Zion, you still see the blood of Jesus recognized even in Zion now. Why? Grace is still at work today. I'll throw more light on this when we meet in the Easter convention from the 15th to the 17th of this month, that just this weekend. If you have been watching me, this is the time to pray for the body of Christ. Especially for our brethren who have not properly understood the message of grace and have stepped into a dimension where it is all about nothing you do matters, grace covers it all. No, it's a deception of Satan to keep them in a powerless form of Christianity. And we, out of love, cannot behold that. So we want to pray for the body of Christ, that that deception will be paralyzed. Those already in it will be drawn to the truth, even through these messages. And others who are not in it will not have even the opportunity to step in there. But that the body of Christ will understand who our Father is and live lives that are aligned with him so that we can be channels for the effortless discharge of Christ-like power upon this earth. Shall we pray for the body of Christ? Father, in the name of our dear Lord Jesus, we thank you. As a global family at this point in time on the day, we unite our hearts and pray in Jesus' name that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we cause a shake and a dismantling of the stronghold of that misunderstanding of grace that gives people the, and the thinking to just take off into any type of life, thinking that you do nothing about it. And it is ushering them into a powerless living. We call that thing to be dismantled in the name of Jesus. We weaken his power over even other sons and daughters who have never stepped in there. In the name of Jesus. And we pray that light will shine for many more to see who you really are. And will draw from such a path of deception. I give you praise Lord in the name of Jesus. Now you have been watching me and you have not yet received Jesus. This is the time to do that. Remember the ultimate goal of Jesus' coming was to open the door that man will receive him and become a son of God. But when the time came, there was the issue of sin. And that's why he died and rose again. Okay? God's plan for you is that you become his son. He predestined that he will give you eternal life. The death and the resurrection of Jesus made this eternal life available. And you can become a son of God today by receiving that life into you. How do you do that? The Bible says that if you declare Jesus as Lord and believe with your heart that he died and rose again, it says that a transaction will take place in your spirit and you'll be transmuted from a human species into a son of God. This is real and it happens in the spirit if you believe and declare. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit as I declare that Jesus is Lord. I am born again. Hallelujah. Indeed, I've done this wrong. How truly you are born again. What we need to do is to continue to follow the glad devotion daily and receive truth to grow because coming into being as a born again is just the beginning of the journey. And you must also get planted in the Bible teaching and practicing church. You can call the numbers they played on your screen and we can help you get planted in one of such around where you stay. Surely I'm going to come away again in our next episode as we look at this subject of the power of the cross under another subheading. But till then, love is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binder. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744. Or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on the screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.